All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, so again, all we're going to do today is just go over the test review, make sure we know what we're doing. Um, I will also go over any questions for, that you have from the quiz or the group quiz or really anything. I'll, I'll answer any questions that you have. I got some extra prompts to do if we need to. Uh, but other than that, I'll let you I'll let you guys have some time. Does that sound good? Yeah. Sounds good. All right, so um, I'm going to go through some of these questions pretty in depth here. Um, so this is the first one here, number 39. Um, solve the polynomial equation by factoring. I'm sorry, it's a little small there, but uh, you'll, you'll be fine. You guys will live. Um, solving the polynomial equation by factoring. That's the that's the premise there. 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 8x minus 12. So when I see four terms like that, the first thing that I should look for is GCF. But if I can't find a GCF, well, then I would use factoring by grouping. And you see that I'm kind of already starting that with the two lines there. Um, we factor that by grouping. I pull out an x squared from the first set to get a 2x plus 3. I pull out a negative 4. Remember, it leaves with a negative, so I, pull, I remove the negative. I remove the negative 4, and it turns out to be a 2x plus 3. Now, remember, people, if you try to factor by grouping and you don't get the same thing inside the parentheses, it just doesn't factor by grouping. I remember on this past quiz, um, a lot of people tried to remove things and then just take those two pieces, even though they didn't match and say those were factors, and that's not true. You can't do that. These must match. So my two uh, factors are x squared minus 4, the pieces that were left over, and then the 2x plus 3, uh, one set of the ones that are on the inside. Okay. Um, remember, does that, does that factor here on the left side? Yes. x squared minus 4 does factor. It turns into x minus 2x plus 2. And then we got that 2x plus 3, right? Now, remember, the directions say, the directions say to solve. Remember that there are directions that say to solve and directions that say just to factor. Um, these, this one says to solve or find the roots. That means that I want to get it x equals. That's why you see the answers as x equals negative 2, x equals positive 2, x equals negative 3 over 2, or negative 1.5 would have been acceptable there too. Okay. That would be fine. I would not accept, I would not accept if you had just left this as your answer. I know some of you are saying, well, it says to factor. Yes, it says to solve by way of factoring. Okay? I'm telling you to solve that polynomial, which means get x equals using factoring methods. So that's my answer. Okay, any questions on 39? Good? Okay. Let's take a look at uh, 51 there. Okay, solve each equation by finding all roots. Now, again, solve, I don't even have to look at the problem yet. I know my answer is going to look like x equals, x equals, x equals, right? So here's my equation. Um, x to the fourth minus 5x to the third plus 15x squared minus 45x plus 54. Okay, so if I want to solve, then my first route would probably be to try to factor this at all. But does this factor? No, this doesn't factor. There's no GCF. And it's got five terms, so I don't know how to factor anything with that. So I go to my calculator. So let me pull up the calculator, because I keep saying, go to your calculator and find the roots. And I'm sure there are people out there saying, oh, OK, well, how do you do that? Remember that you just plug it into your calculator, x to the fourth. You go to your y equals x to the fourth uh, minus 5x to the third plus 15x squared minus 45x plus 54. I'm going to zoom 6 to put it back to my standard 10 by 10 window. OK, I see two roots. How many roots should there be in the end? Four. The highest power on x is 4. I see 2 going on. That means, and is there any multiplicities within the graph that I see on the screen? No, because they're going straight through. They're not bending. They're not bouncing. So that's telling me that the other two roots are probably non-real. Either that or they're just off the left or right side of my graph, and I just don't see them. Okay, what does this look like? This looks like 2 or 3, right? Uh, let me put that over here. This looks like 2 or 3 to me. So what are we going to do here first? Oh, looks like we did 2. Okay, there's the synthetic division with 2. Okay, and then we get 1, negative 3, 9, and then negative 27. I could have done 3 at the very beginning. 
Now, that means that I've got an x equals 2, and then this x cubed minus 3x squared plus 9x minus 27. Now, here's, here's something interesting. You could go and do this by way of factoring by grouping at this point. This does group to factor down. Okay? However, didn't we see a 3 as well? Could I synthetically divide with 3? Yes. See, I could have said this. Okay, well, can't I just keep going with this 1, negative 3, 9, and negative 27? Yeah, you, you definitely can. See, there, this is going to factor by grouping. I can already tell. Um, but we get a 1, a 3, a 0, uh, a 0, a 9, a 27, and a 0, which means I will have left x squared plus 9, which is exactly what we have when we factor this by grouping. So you have some options at that point. All right. So x squared plus 9 equals 0. You have to solve that one. You get plus or minus 3i. That's where this is coming from over here. Right? You subtract the 9, you square root. Remember, whenever you square root a negative, you get an i. Don't forget the plus or minus. A lot of people forget the plus or minus on your quiz. Don't forget the plus or minus. And then double check it in the end. Did I have four roots? Yes. One, two, three, four. Yeah, the plus i, the minus i. Three, plus three i and the plus minus three i. Okay, questions on 51. We good? Cool. Is there another one down there? I hope there is. All right. Okay, write in simplest form with the given zeros. Okay, I've got one plus i and then two. Now, remember, if I've got 1 plus i, that means I've also got 1 minus i. So I can use 1 plus or minus i. I've got 1 plus or minus i. Now, the 2 should be really easy. We just subtract over the 2. The difficult one here is going to be this 1 plus or minus i. We subtract over the 1, and we get plus or minus i, and we square both sides. Remember, i squared is negative 1. You could have just wrote it as the square root of negative 1. But then we FOIL this, x minus 1 squared is x squared minus 2x plus 1. A lot of people are kind of stopping there when you try to find those factors. Remember that you have to add back over this piece on the right side, which means I've got x squared minus 2x plus 2. And that x minus 2 is just dropping down from here. Okay, So we got x squared minus 2x plus 2 and then x minus 2. And when we, when we multiply that out, my function is x to the third minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4. Okay, those are the, the, that's the simplest polynomial with those three roots. Okay, questions on 54? You good? Again, if you got this problem wrong, check here first. Make sure that you're using that correctly. That's the, that's the hard, hardest part about this problem. If you didn't use, if you didn't get that, then you're not going to get the answer right. You got to look at the x squared minus 2x plus 2. Okay. Any other questions on 54? Next page. All right. Here's 57 and 58. We'll do those together because I'm going to pull down the screen shade at the same time. Uh, number 57. Now, they're both identified leading coefficient, degree, and end behavior. Okay, now, so number 57, positive odd. Okay, positive even, negative even, positive odd. That means it's going to go up on the right, down on the left. Number 58, negative odd. Positive, negative, positive, negative. So it's going to go the exact opposite. It's going to go up on the left, down on the right. Now, notice again, notice again that these pieces, I don't know why that's not boxed. There we go. Is that better? Um, these pieces are exactly the same from here to here. Those are exactly the same, isn't it? Except for the P's and the Q's, obviously, the name, the name of the function. On the test, will that be written out or do we need to like, write out the function? No, you need to write out that whole thing. Yeah. Um, so as X approaches positive infinity, P of X approaches positive infinity. As X approaches negative infinity, P of x approaches negative infinity. What does that mean? That means that on the right side, so as x gets bigger, horizontally on the right side, 
What does it do vertically? It goes up. On the left side, as x gets smaller in the negative direction, the function goes down vertically. Negative infinity down for the y value. Number 58, as x gets bigger on the right side, the function goes down. On the left side, the function goes up. So just, you know, know that it's going to be the same for every single type of end behavior, you know, problem. You're going to have the same notation. What's going to change is your positive to negative infinity. All right, there's 57 and 58. Um, number 59 and 60 looks like identify the function as odd or even degree, positive or negative leading coefficient. All right, oops, sorry, kind of showing it there. Um, we got to match it. Number 59, positive, negative, oh, negative, even. Both go in the same direction, both downward, negative, even. Number 60, positive, negative, positive, odd, positive, odd. There we go. Well, what about like the little bend in the. Doesn't matter, I'm looking at end behavior. Oh. The end, end behavior. So then, like, how would you even get the bend? What's that? How would you even get the bend? It's just like that. X squared. It's not an X squared. It's it's even, which means that it could be an X to the fourth or an X to the sixth. And that's why we would have a bend. Yeah. We actually learned that in calculus. How would those bends cr get created? Teaching your sister now. Oops. Don't look. Number 63. Okay, now this is a fun one. This is the graph by hand one. No graphing calculator, right? No graphing calculator for 63. Um, so r of x is equal to 2x to the fourth plus x to the third minus 19x squared minus 9x plus 9. Now, I would start here by trying to graph this and saying, okay, well, if, um, if I don't have my calculator, I would hope that this factor, does this factor? No, this doesn't factor. It's five terms, right? Uh, so I can't factor it. Bummer. So now that means I've got to make my p over q list. The hard part about this one is that the p value is 9 and the q value is 2, which means I'm going to have some fractions of possibility. Okay. Save the fractions for last if there are any. Um, but my factors of 9 actually are a small amount. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 9. There's only actually three options for my, my p value. My q value, there's only two options. Plus or minus one, 2, plus or minus 1. So that means my p over q list, looks like it ran into my graph over here. My p over q list is 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 3 over 1, 3 over 2, 9 over 1, 9 over 2. So let's start with my whole numbers. I wonder, did negative 3 work? Did negative 3 work? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I have three and negative one. Negative three. Negative three. I, looks like I did negative one. Oh, negative three did work. Negative three did work. Um, looks like I did negative one. Not me. Um, and then it actually factored by grouping. So out of the, you know, six possibility of whole numbers, four of them were actually roots. Um, again, save the fractions for last. Yeah. Wait till the end to do those. Um, Again, there were uh, there were roots that were fractions on your group test. And again, your group test is more difficult. Take that for what it's worth. Um, but no matter how you do it, you get to this final part here where you've got the zeros. Uh, x equals negative 1, x equals negative 3, x equals positive 3, x equals... Oh, 1 half? There was a fraction. 1 half. Uh, so we have those four roots. Okay, these four roots. So we plot those four roots. We got negative 1 positive one half, positive three, negative three. Now, again, I cannot stress this enough. I need to see a table. I need to see a table of values. What should the table include? Well, I don't really need this negative four or the positive four. I'm really just looking for three values, one in between negative three and positive one, or sorry, excuse me, negative three and negative one to get negative two, one in between negative one and positive one half. Let's try zero. And one in between one, uh, one half and three. Well, let's try two. Okay. Now, beyond the right side and left side, I can tell based on the end behavior that this is going to go up on the left and up on the right because it's a positive even. Okay. I guess if you don't need, if you don't even want to worry about the end behavior, well, then just make tables on the end or make an extra point on the left and right side. 
All right, so now we see, okay, negative 2. Now, how do I get the negative 25? Remember, remember that we're plugging it back into the original. I want to find R of negative 2, which plugging it, it's plugging it in for X, which turns out to be negative 25. R of 0 is 9. R of 2 is negative 45. So we say negative 2 comma negative 25, 0 comma 9, 2 comma negative 45, and then we know that it goes like so. Are there going to be ones with weird numbers like that? Like negative 25, so I can make it react? No yeah, I'm going to make you, uh, it's going to be a weird number, so I want I want to see it like stretched out on the graph. You're going to, there, there won't be a normal 10 by 10 graph, there will just be like an open graph that you'll have to label. Yeah. Don't be afraid of weird numbers. They're not weird, they're just different. <laughs> Any questions on that one? Okay, um, let's take a look here. Graph each function, estimate the local maximum. We haven't done this in a while. Do you remember how to do this? No. Let's, let's do that. Uh, remember, this is the one where I, I didn't get to teach it in class, so I, I made a video that night with, and Sadie joined in. Um, so I go to my y equals, and see, I, I've got to have my graphing calculator for this one. Right, this is this one is not underlined. I have to have my graphing calculator. You cannot estimate the local maxima or minima if you do not have your graphing calculator. Well, again, actually, I do teach you that in calculus when we get there. Two, negative two x to the fourth plus x to the third plus five x squared plus six. Oops, that's not a six. That's a three. Negative two x to the fourth plus x to the third plus five x squared plus six, zoom, six. Now, the thing is you have to see it on your screen to be able to, okay, so it's, you see how it's just a little bit above my screen, that, that maximum point, right? Um, I'm just gonna change my window just a little bit. I just wanna go a little bit above that. So my Y maximum, let's just make it 15 instead of 10. Let's see if I see my upper point there. Yep, I do. Okay, now, how many local maximum points do I have? Two. How many local minimum points do I have? One. One. Okay. Because remember, what we talked about at the very beginning of this chapter was that, or not this chapter, but second part of this chapter was, I've got as many local maximums and minimums minus one of my degree. Right? So if my degree is four, I might have three local maximums or minimums. Okay? All right, so let's find out where these are. To find, let's find our first local maximum, the one that's on the far left side over there. Second, calculate maximum point is choice four. Now remember, you go somewhere to the left, you trace to the left, you hit enter. You trace to the right, you hit enter. You trace in the middle, you hit enter. And then it says, okay, so my maximum point is 8.03. And it occurs at negative 0.95. Uh, I'm okay if you just give me the y value. I do the same thing. I'm going to calculate my minimum value now. Choice three. It's going to go left bound. I'm going to trace somewhere to the left of the little dip. Somewhere to the right. Somewhere in the middle. And so it looks like it's six. The, the minimum value is six. Local minimum value is six. And then I'm going to second calculate the maximum on the right side. Left side, enter, right side, enter, guess somewhere in the middle. The maximum value here is 10.94, local maximum. Not absolute, but local. So that's why we see here the local maximums are 10.94 and 8.026, and the local minimum is 6. Yeah. Yeah, I would expect something like that. Those are free and easy points. <laughs> I don't know. After all this review, I think the whole thing is easy. All right. Oops. Okay. Uh, number 75 and 76. Okay. So those ones I've got to, oh, just 75, right? We need to do 76. Um, um, number 75, stretch vertically by a factor of three, move one unit to the right. All right, now first, stretching vertically by a factor of three, 
multiplies everything by three, right? So stretching vertically by a factor of three gets nine X cubed minus 15 X squared plus three X plus three. The difficult piece to this is moving it one unit to the right, because now I have to put on X, what's it gonna be, X plus one or X minus one? X minus one in for X everywhere where I see it. Okay. Which requires a little bit of algebra. No, not gonna lie there. Just a bit. Um, X minus one to the third. You know you could do Pascal China to figure out X minus one to the third time. Um, but X minus one to the third and X minus one squared. And then you don't forget you gotta plug it in here as well. Three times X has to turn into three times X minus one. So when we multiply all of that junk out, okay, this is what we get. So this is uh, multiplying the x to the third. So we get 9x to the third minus 27x squared plus 27x minus 9. Uh, this is the foiling for the x minus 1 squared. So minus 15x squared plus 30x minus 15. And then this is distributing in here, 3x minus 3. You know what? Piece gets lost by the wayside so often. Right there. Okay, that plus 3 that was sitting out on the end from the original problem usually kind of gets left behind. And then we just combine like terms. Looks like there's a no 9x to the third, uh, and then 27 and negative 15, so negative 42x squared. 27 and 30 make, oh, and 3 make 60. Negative 9 and negative 15 make negative 24. Oh, no. Oh, the plus 3 and the minus 3 cancel. Yeah, the plus 3 and the minus 3 cancel right there. Um, so it is just a minus 24. I was thinking it should be minus 41. Could you move it to the right before you stretch it? No, no. you don't want to do that. Um, always go in order. For this one, it wouldn't have changed anything. But for some, some transformations are not commutative like that. Um, so be careful when you do that. Did it give the answer for 76 as well? Oh, she must have assigned 76. All right, now here's that number 15 on that page F37. This is just a regression problem. Um, we put this in our calculators. Um, we, oh, I didn't tell you to do this. Oh, I didn't tell you to be years since 2000. Did anybody just naturally do that? Some of you guys? Okay, cool. So for those of you who did that, your answers are going to match what's on the screen right now. Um, if you didn't do that, that's okay. I'll do it real quick. Um, let's go into my stat edit. And for my list one, I'll just put in the years, uh, 2000, 2001, two, 2002, 2005, okay. And then 165, 168, 181, 261, 340. All right. So if you did not change the number of years for your X value, um, I'm going to second quit there. Uh, let's run a stat count. Let's do what did it turn out to be? Oh, cubic. What's interesting about this is if I run my cubic, I see that it's an R squared value of one. You can stop when it hits an R squared value of one. Because what's going to happen when I run my quartic? Oops, uh, just stat. Uh, stat calc. 7. Look at the A value of the quartet. So what's going to happen to my x to the fourth power term? It's going to go bye-bye. It's going to go away. It's going to be 0 x to the fourth, which essentially just reverts it back to cubic. So let's just run the cubic again. Stat, calc, cubic. And there's my equation. So if you had not, see, look how huge my numbers are. Uh, so if you had not scaled down your x values, that's what we got. Uh, x to the third minus 5,998 x squared plus 1 plus 11 million 992,000 minus 79,919,000,000, no, 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 I lied, 7,991,999,835. It's a little, a little big, yeah. 
Now, the answer to the question should have been the same thing. Use the polynomial model to estimate the number of city employees in 2007. Uh, so I would go into my Y equals. I'll go VARS, statistics, EQ to plug it in. And then I'll turn on my plot. And zoom stat. Okay, and now I want to go, I want to, I want to find the value of 2007. So second calculate value of 2007. Oh wait, it's not going to be on my screen. Let's zoom out. So second calculate value of 2007. There it is. Um, 606 employees. You get the same thing in the end when I interpret the results. Okay? You won't have the same equation, but when you go to interpret the results, you'll have the same thing. Mm. All right. So, got about 15 minutes. What Are there any questions that you'd like me to talk through, go over? Answer, you could ask me about the quiz, you could ask me about the group quiz, you could ask me about the homework, you could ask me about life in general, you could ask me about anything. An open book. What's the answer to number one on the test? It's a number. Oh, oh. How many points is the test? Um, that's a great question. I think it's 80, which is a normal test. Usually tests are 80 to 100 points. The chapter 7 test will be worth more points because it's a bigger chapter. Like this is just over section 6.5 to 6.9. But when we get to chapter 7, we'll do an entire chapter 7 test. So I think that one's more like 100 points, but it's somewhere that's pretty. What were you going to say? Favorite color. Favorite what? Color. Blue. Yeah. 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 If nobody fails this test, can we get a day of baseball? Yeah. If nobody fails this test. Yeah. Nobody fails this test. Like fail. Well, fail. Seeing a, like, no, I can't do nobody gets an F. Oh, yeah. you can't if everybody it. gets an A, sure. Oh, oh I'm getting your <laughs> hey now. Oh. Oh. More time. I'm just kidding. More time. Oh. Is there going to be one like number five on the group test? Is that the multiple choice one? Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. 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 What color do you think that is? Blue. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I always thought it was green. No, green is science. Blue is science. Blue is science. Blue is a See, I, I don't know. Sometimes I've done math. It's red, too. That's yeah. Blue. No, math is English is always black. Really? I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. What was the study? That's yellow. That's red. That's yellow because that's the color of the paper. I think I always did like orange. That's the study. Is that the green or red? Science is blue. Science is green. No, science is always blue. No, no. Science is always blue. It's always red. Science is definitely red. And science is green. Yeah. Maybe history. History is green. Oh, yellow. That's a good color. I never actually got it. I'm going to turn off the video now. Wait, wait. 